Hello. Welcome to the Professor Knits podcast. I'm Nikki and I'm your host. I'm going to chit chat a little bit today about some knitting and some spinning. And if you are a returning viewer, you'll notice that I just posted episode 18 uh, before this one, which was a an episode I filmed at Easter time and then just completely forgot to upload it and I just found it uh, in my computer. So I've uploaded it. I don't care if it's kind of out, out of date. I just didn't feel like having to re-talk uh, all about those projects again. Um, so it's from Easter and I suggest or I encourage, I lovingly encourage, uh, that you watch it through to the end because I also talk about uh, my other favorite craft which or art and craft which is pisanki um, the ancient art of egg batik anyway easter's over so i'm not going to talk about that in this episode but in case you're wondering why there's this random episode plugged in in july talking about easter that's why because you know me if you're my returning viewer you know i'm not a very organized person at least not when it comes to podcasting because I always do it on a whim. So let me begin uh, today with um, thanking those of you who um, commented on my video about Ravelry. I kind of feel like the fabric of our community has been torn apart a little bit, um, but there's a lot of uncomfortable but important conversations that are being had about this. And the last thing I'm going to say about that, and then I'm not going to keep talking about it because it's old news now, um, is this should not, I don't think this should be an easy thing, right? Regardless on what side you fall down on, I think most of us um, are shocked, but also supportive of, of Ravelry. I kind of envy the people who are just so it's like cut and dry for them and they're like you know I saw one person post a comment somewhere you know good riddance Trump supporters don't let the what's it called yarn winder thwack you on the way out like that kind of divi divisive uh, rhetoric uh, you know I, I'm, I'm envious of those people who are so sure um, because I'm not I'm not 100% sure that um, it was the best thing, despite my support for it. Um, but thank you if you didn't subscribe. I did lose a couple of subscribers, and I don't know if it's because they were Donald Trump supporters and they didn't like what I had to say, or if they were Ravelry supporters and they didn't like what I had to say. I really don't know. I'm not too concerned about it. Um, but I did gain a few more, so that's good. I'm, you know, I really love this community, and I'm... I don't know, maybe it's because it's the summertime and I'm not working as much. I have more time to, to think about these things, but the more I sit with the information, the more I support Ravelry, but it still is not an easy thing. And um, one of my commenters called it McCarthyism and I think he or she, I'm not too sure who, if Rocky is uh, a male or a female. Uh, but, you know, it's it's a tricky, tricky time and let's have the uncomfortable conversations. Don't be afraid uh, to speak your mind about it. Um, and I think that that's really happening. Like a lot of people who might think, oh, Ravelry, are you doing the right thing by this? Are afraid to say so. And they, they just kind of remain vague in their comments about inclusivity and choices. I don't know, I'll never be vague. I'll always tell you exactly what I think. Or how I feel because that's just the way I roll. Um, but for those of you who are absolutely sure about your decisions, I envy you because it's more uncomfortable for me um, to be so black and white, cut and dry. Anyways, enough about that. Let's talk about knitting. I'm going to pull a couple of things out from the archives. Uh, this is something that I was working on over last winter that I've, ha I've had a lot of mixed feelings about and it's the Mayu sweater that is designed by a woman who works at a Spastrico up in Montreal um, 
um, out of Espace Tricot, and I can't remember the name, her name off the top of my head, but it'll be in the, I'll post the picture here of the pattern. And it's the Mayu sweater. And it's a very unusual drapey, almost like a poncho feel sweater with the uh, sleeves that attach um, to the waist. And I remember what, one of the very first episodes of the Espace Tricot podcast, um, one of the women, uh, I think it was Lisa, I can't remember, was wearing it and I just loved it. And they had it in this beautiful, soft um, gray yarn and I just thought it looked very chic and elegant. And so I decided to knit it and I knitted it with um, this yarn, which is Rowan Felted Tweed DK. And so it's not 100% wool. It's got a little bit of viscose or rayon. And it's a very tweedy, it's, it's a nice enough yarn. It's not my favorite yarn to knit with. I'm not a huge fan of Rowan yarns, um, but it was fine, right? It's a very, very light DK. And the pattern was unusual, a lot of knitting, and the construction was unusual, but I'm just, it just didn't really come off. It fits, it's a very ill-fitting on me, and I don't know if I sewed it up incorrectly. I mean, I was pretty careful about following the directions. And I kind of feel like, because it's such a big thing, like, I mean, I love the color, but because of the size, it kind of, I kind of feel like I'm a um, Grimace. Remember Grimace from McDonald's back when they had the burglar and Grimace, all the old Ronald McDonald uh, characters? I don't know if they still have them. I just realized the kid, the door to my kid's room is open and you can see what a filthy housekeeper I can be. Toys everywhere. Anyway, uh, there's my Cabbage Patch doll laying on the floor. Hopefully you can't see it. Where was I? Oh yes, I kind of feel like Grimace. And I feel like maybe because of this, the, the, this color, I should have maybe gone with a more fitted garment, more of a tailored garment. So my conundrum is whether or not I just file it under the category of lesson learned and wear it sort of as a cozy pullover when I'm walking the dog. Yes, we got a puppy. I will show her, but she's sleeping right now and I have to treasure these moments when she's sleeping because she's a handful. So I'll introduce her in uh, a podcast uh, when she's awake or I'll post a picture or something. So I don't know if I just kind of keep it as something I throw over on chilly mornings when I'm walking the dog, maybe take it camping. Um, I don't know, I just don't know. I've, I've thought about frogging it and repurposing the yarn, but I don't think I enjoy the yarn enough to knit another garment with it. And that it was a lot of knitting. This is all stockinette stitch. And it's a big oversize, what do they call it when the, the sleeves are attached? Do, not Donegal sleeves, something with the D. So you kind of look like a penguin, but they're quite chic when you, when you pull it up. I didn't put it on because it's 95 degrees outside and our air conditioner broke. We need a whole new HVAC system. We knew it because it's 20 years old. We knew it was coming, but man, oh man, we just got a fence put in the backyard. Now we have to pay for a whole new HVAC unit. Mm. Go buy my yarn so I can afford it. Just kidding. Uh, so anyways, I, I don't know. I'll, I'll think about it. Um, I might just keep it and have it as a gentle reminder that sometimes you got to think more clearly about yarn pattern matches. And, you know, it's not that it was a, I, I mean, I'm not dissing the pattern. It was fun, it was easy, and it was an, a unique thing. But she's also, I think, an untested uh, designer. I think she's fairly new. And, which is fine, right? That's good. I support the new, the new designers. I think she's an in-house designer at Espace Trico. But when I, you know, if I'm committing to a huge project with over $100 worth of yarn to maybe stick with the tried and true uh, designers, like Isabel Kramer, my all-time favorite, or uh, stick to smaller 
projects or projects maybe with a cheaper yarn for a new designer that I'm not sure about yet because we all have our preferences there's nothing wrong with saying that uh, so I don't know if you have an opinion let me know in the comments otherwise I'll just uh, not worry about it to the fall I'm not going to start frogging it now it's a pretty sticky yarn so I could run into some problems if I frog it so that's um, a whip a finished object from the archives. A more recent finished object um, is my second pair, or third, third or fourth pair actually, of Mabodin Selbu Mittens. This is from the very talented Skein Deer Knits Selbu Mitten Club, her first one, I think from a couple of years ago. And this particular design is the Mabodin design, and I just, I, I love it. Oh, sorry, that looks disgusting, doesn't it? I'm also getting over a wicked case of poison ivy. Um, I'm on steroids uh, to get rid of it. I, I, I was doing lots of gardening. I was doing so much gardening on the weekend, and I wasn't doing a whole lot of ground cover removal, but I just did a little bit. Once again, I need to plug you in. This won't hurt a bit. I need to really keep my phone charged. And on Saturday and then on Sunday morning, I woke up. I've never been in so uncomfortable in my life. And um, I had to go get steroid shots. Now I'm on steroid pills and hydroxyzine, which makes me sleepy and incoherent. And uh, so I, I apologize if I'm... A little out of it but I'm always out of it I mean last time I was drunk right last time when I was talking about the Ravelry thing I was drinking anyways I don't have any sort of abuse of sub substance abuse so I apologize if, uh, if I if I'm making light of something like that anyways uh, Mabodin Skein Deer Knits knitted with Holst Garn which I absolutely love it's the Danish yarn that's incredibly affordable and this was the super soft and I held it double because it's a very light fingering um, yarn in the slate gray and then the dark gray and I held it double to achieve worsted weight and it's the bulk of it is knitted on size 7 needles US size 7 and the little tiny cuff area was knitted on size 6 and I, I just really like these patterns I like um, how low the cuff goes and Skein Deer Knits she has her own podcast channel with thousands of subscribers and she's really engaging and is now also a designer and I'm sure you've heard of her and she just does beautiful work and I'm very excited to wear these mitts. These, I think I'm keeping these ones because they fit perfectly and it's my favorite design so far with wonderful neutral colors. So these I'm keeping for myself because I like to give away um, mitts. They're easy to give away because they don't take a whole lot of time to knit and so giving them away doesn't hurt as much as when you knit something a little bit bigger. So those are my two finished objects. And I will soon be casting on another one of the Salbu Knits mitts because I like to always have one of these on the go um, because it's quick, instant gratification, well not instant, but fast gratification. And I want to stockpile a bunch for the winter so that um, as I feel, as the generosity hits me every once in a while to give a pair away, I'll have them ready. Because what I like to do is when somebody says, oh, those mitts are gorgeous. I like taking them off and saying, here, would you like them? And people will be like, yes, of course. I did that with a colleague of mine. I, I brought them in. She was just needed mitts for a project she was doing and would give them back. And when she saw them, she was like, oh my God, these are gorgeous. I'm like, you can have them. And they were actually this, I'm pretty sure that was this design, but I had done it in red and white. Um, and she was forever grateful. And I like, I like that kind of spontaneous thing. But these, no, no, no. All right, so those are my two finished objects to show. And I think that that brings me up to speed with you guys because I'm so sporadic with my podcasting that I'll often get a bunch of projects finished in between podcasting um, and then they just 
I forget to tell you about them, but I think that's, that's it for the last few months, um, having all of my whips presented as finished objects to you all. All right, so what about my works in progress? Well, I still have a, a few things um, on the go, and I wasn't supposed to have multiple whips. I'm supposed to be a monogamous knitter now, but I realize that that's just not the way I knit. It's not the way I operate, so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna worry about it. I'm just gonna em embrace uh, the multitude of whips that I have. I don't even have that many compared to most people. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna talk about, which I haven't really made any progress on, uh, are my socks. I'm knitting just a basic vanilla sock, toe up two at a time vanilla sock, magic loop, on 2.25 millimeter needles, so nice and skinny on my Addy Sock Rockets. These are my favorite needles to knit um, socks on because I can't break them. And uh, I'm doing contrasting toe and uh, what I'm gonna do is do a contrasting heel uh, in the same yarn, same purple yarn. So that means I'm just gonna knit two really long tubes and then cut in the after heel later. Um, even though I, pr I prefer the heel turn and gusset, or the, the gusset, the traditional heel turn, um, when it comes to contrasting heels and toes, I like to do it, the cut in the afterthought heel. The yarn, uh, the purple yarn is my own yarn. Um, this is what I used. It's my Titans base, 25% nylon, 75% merino wool. And I used it for my son's minion, purple minion hat, which I talk about in previous episodes, as well as the one I just posted about Easter as a finished object. So I'm just using the leftover um, yarn for the contrasting toes and heels. I just, I really find using up scraps of yarn, whether it's a, you know, just 25 grams like this, or maybe this is closer to 30, or just the, even the tiniest, tiniest little bit. I find it very satisfying to use up everything. So I've got a big bag of odds and ends, balls of leftover yarn in my basement that I really just, every time I use one up, I feel good. And so I, I often will put them into my Cozy Memories blanket that I'm knitting and also I'm doing another one that I'm crocheting. Uh, but I, I'm a little bit more careful with my color combinations for those. Well, at least I am with, the, with one of them. So it's always nice to, and it feels very satisfying because this is expensive yarn, right? Hand dyed yarn is expensive. So I like to make sure I don't waste a bit. So my yarn, Medusa yarn, medusayarnandfiber.com. Sorry, Medusa yarn and fiber. If you want to check out my inventory, you can go to medusayarn.com. Um, the aqua blue is a cascade sock yarn. Uh, that is also 25% nylon, 75% uh, merino wool. And it's just something I picked up in my local yarn shop uh, a while back. I don't remember the colorway or anything like that. It's probably called Aqua Blue. And I just really thought it was a pretty color combination. And these are for me, of course. I don't think I'd be so brave as to knit socks for somebody else. So I always like to have a pair of socks on the go. And I keep my sock project stored in my cute little project bag. I don't have a lot of project bags. I'd rather spend the money on yarn. But this was too cute to pass up. Um, this was made by Rachel from Treehouse Knits. I like her podcast as well. And she's a, uh, she knits a lot of Selbu mittens as well. And it's just got all these adorable foxes on it uh, as if they were going skiing. So I picked this up from her Etsy shop a couple years ago. My sock bag. Um, another whip I'll show you is one that I've made no progress on, even though I should, because I want to wear it this summer. And that is my linen tank top. Uh, so just a quick recap. I've, I'm, uh, this is the Athens 
tank top by Shelly Anderson for uh, Shibui Knits. And I have knitted the first front panel. It's been stuffed in my, the, my project bag for a couple weeks, so it's kind of wrinkled up. And I need to cast on the second part. And um, I will do it because I'd like to wear it this summer. But, you know, like I said, I'm not a very monogamous knitter and I've cast on something new, which I'll show you right away, uh, that's been taking up most of my knitting time. So this uh, is a beautiful Shibui linen, the reed linen in the um, shore colorway, a beautiful summery blue, soft blue uh, for summer. Um, I've mentioned this before, I'll say it again. I think this is my last 100% linen garment. I don't enjoy it. Uh, it's not, I don't get the same satisfaction as knitting with wool, uh, but we'll see. We'll see. And this is stored in my project bag with skulls and roses on it from the very talented Wanda over at Twisted Yarn and Fiber.com. Uh, I love this project bag. It's very, it's more for a bigger project, um, but I like the skulls. It feels a little edgier. But I also like the cute little skiing foxies too. Just depends on my mood. All right, so my newest cast on is a cast on I've been wanting to do for several years since it came out, and it's the Reagan cardigan by Isabel Kramer and I'll put a picture of it here and I think the first time I ever saw it she was wearing it in an interview maybe on the fruity knitting podcast I don't remember but I just love it but I'm always a little mm, cautious of cardigans because of my body type and I get the sense because I've got you know I'm fairly average in my frame but I've got large breasts for my frame so cardigans can be tricky especially if they button up this doesn't button up but just how they drape can be kind of tricky so I'm, I'm pretty cautious knitting I think I've only ever knit one cardigan and that was the lush cardigan um, for myself um, that buttons up but I'm gonna have to sew the buttons up because it always wants to pop open anyways knitter problems right um, this one, um, I decided just to go for it because I love it so much and it's such a unique construction. And I get the sense when I look at pictures of Isabel Kramer wearing her designs or when I see, saw her in this interview, which is already going back a couple years, I think she's a very petite woman, like really petite. I don't know, my, my knitting bestie thought it was the opposite. She thought she was really tall from pictures, but you can never really tell. Um, but she's definitely thin and small framed. Whether she's tall or short um, is neither here nor there. Um, so everything tends to look good on her, kind of like Andrea Mowry, which I talk about in another podcast. Everything tends to look really good on these women. Um, so I'm kind of nervous about how it'll fit, but so far so good. So what I've knitted so far, and it's another really unusual construction, and what you do is you knit a really long 30-inch um, piece of, of fabric that is the back and part of the sleeves um, of the cardigan. And I'm not going to give away too much information because it's a paid-for pattern, but it's, it involves provisional cast-on, um, and it's just very different. So I have uh, started... Once I started the back piece, I got very addicted, and now I'm working on one of the sleeves, which is just a continuation of the back piece. So I envision, I'm gonna get all caught up here, so I better not. Um, as, as it comes together, you'll, you'll see it, and then I'll be doing the other sleeve, and so it'll almost be like a shrug. The two sleeves and the back uh, are knit in all one piece. And then you add the beautiful lace work that kind of serves as the front later on. And you can wear it as a revert, like you can wear it upside down. You can turn it upside down and wear it um, with the lace on top. But all the pictures I've seen, including the ones in which Isabel Kramer is doing that, it doesn't look reversible to me. It just looks like you're wearing your cardigan upside down. That's 
you know, I'm not dissing her or anything like that, but I'm going to be honest. I don't think it does adds to the feature. Um, or I don't think that's a feature that adds any value to the pattern. I think it's beautiful on its own and it should be worn uh, in the regular way, but to each their own. So I love it so far. I mean, it's so easy um, and you know, I'm really intrigued. I've never knit a sweater constructed like this before or a cardigan constructed like this before. So I'm very eager to see how it turns out. So the, the wool I'm using is Mirasol, which is a Peruvian yarn. And it's the Sulca Legato. You see there in the charcoal color way, and it's a very light fingering yarn. And it is 60% wool, 20% alpaca, and 20% silk. It's got a really nice drape to it. And it's very affordable. Um, it has 274 yards in a 50 gram ball um, and at my local yarn store which is where I picked this up it was $11 per skein so I mean it's a pretty affordable yarn but more importantly um, it goes to a good cause by purchasing Mir Mirasol products you are supporting the children of these shepherds and the continuation of this ancient tradition a portion of every purchase is dedicated directly to the funding of a school in the remote area of Munani in the region of Pumo. It's just the, the writing on this ball band is so tiny. Um, it's very hard to, to read. And there's a face of the child you're helping. Well, who's been helped anyway. Uh, anyway, I love the yarn, love the pattern. Love Isabel Kramer. I think this is the third design by her that I've done. I've done the Humulus. I've done the Baldrick. Now this, I just, I think she's definitely becoming my favorite um, designer. I, I count on her, like I, her and Jennifer Steingast. It's like I know I can trust um, their, the designs. There's so many great designs. Okay, so I also wanted to show you, this is sort of a weird project for me to show. It's the first Stephen West project I've ever attempted, and it's been languishing a little bit. It's the Marled Magic Sweater. And I've talked about my Stephen West confessions in another podcast and how I was late to the, the Stephen West party, but then I went on a fangirl trip to meet him. Um, so anyway, um, a woman was wearing, at, at a fiber show, the Marled Magic Sweater, and she had knit it in these beautiful blues and greens, and I just fell in love with it. And I cast it on, but because I'm still quite wary about how to knit a Stephen West uh, pattern, I'm kind of just using leftover yarn to do it. Because this particular pattern calls for holding together a lace weight and a fingering weight, to and, and that to, to sort of give that marled effect. And I, I, it's kind of weird to even show this because it doesn't look like anything yet because of the unique construction where you knit it really in geomet geometric pieces that you just keep attaching to each other. So I'm trying to keep some sort of pleasing color schematic um, as I go. Lots of green, uh, pardon me, peach, purple, green, blue, if that sounds weird. But anyways, I, I love knitting on it. It's, it's a really cool, scrunchy, scrumptious sweater, but it's gonna take me a while to finish um, because I, like I said, I'm kind of using leftover yarns from other projects. Um, like I said, lots of yellow, um, and they're almost, almost all of them, not every single one, but almost, are my own yarns. Um, so this peach is a, a, a lace weight that is being used quite a bit. Um, and I really, 
I really am intrigued by it. And I think that when it's done, it might be a little kind of an eyesore because I kind of think that a lot of Stephen West's color choices are eyesore, sorry. Um, but I think it's gonna be a cozy, really cool, comfortable sweater. And once I have trust in his abilities, which sounds weird because it's Stephen West, but I haven't built that trust yet. I have the intrigue and the respect, but not the trust. Once I trust that it's something I would wear, then maybe I would consider doing it in neutral, subdued colors, so it could be something I would wear um, on a regular basis. Because I'm kind of conservative that way. I love a good color, a good bold color, but not clashing colors. I'm not gonna, I'm just not gonna wear it. I feel too clownish. I feel like I can tell already that this might even be getting a little clownish for me. But again, um, I'm not really spending a lot of valuable, like everything so far that's gone in has been um, extra yarn that I've had left over from other projects. And like I've mentioned, that's very satisfying to make sure nothing goes to waste. And what, what pattern is better than a Stephen West pattern to throw in a bunch of colors together, right? Um, so I'm reserving judgment. I will say I have a huge respect for the man and his ingenuity on how he's putting together this particular pattern. It's my first Stephen West. Uh, so we'll see how, how the final project ends up. And now I haven't pulled this out for several months. And so now that it's out and I'm touching the scrumptiousness of it because there's so much garter stitch and brioche. And brioche is easy, you guys. Don't, don't be scared off by it. Um, I'm feeling inspired to work on it. So I might have to, I might have to work on it later today and see. So yeah, very, very much an enjoyment. And I'm kind of just trying to let go of wondering what colors will look good next. I'm just gonna enjoy it and have a good time with it, which I think is pretty much adheres with Stephen West's knitting philosophy, right? Have, have fun with it. The knitting bag is another knitting bag that I have um, from Wanda over at Twisted Yarn and Fiber. I love this this bag. It's um, a drawstring bucket bag, perfect for a really big sweater. And just a stunning, absolutely stunning fabric with all sorts of um, flowers and birds and blues and greens and yellows and just a beautiful, beautiful bag, well made. Um, so check out Wanda's Twisted Yarn and Fiber. That's it for my whips. One thing I, I do uh, wanna show is some spinning that I did over the winter. I haven't gotten a lot of spinning done because my three-year-old daughter, she's in the defiant stage, like full on defiance. Like if I say, don't do this, sweetheart, she'll do it. If I try to use reverse psychology, she's smarter than me and she'll do it. Like she's just so amazing and fierce and just a force, a fierce force to be reckoned with and I love every minute of it. Um, but I can't spin when she's around because she'll put her fingers, like I'll say, watch your fingers, and her fingers go. Um, or she'll try to untwist what I've already spun. And, you know, I, I, I like to think of myself as, as a reasonably good mom. But when it comes to my yarn and my knitting and my spinning, I will scream. I'll be like, no! If, if, I, if she's about to touch something that might lose a stitch or... Yeah, the not so good mommy. Mommy dearest comes out. Um, so I just don't get a whole lot of spinning done. At least with knitting, she pretends to knit next to me. Like I give her some uh, old yarn and uh, knitting needles and she, she thinks she's knitting with me. So that's kind of cute. But spinning, she could actually really hurt herself. Like she could break a finger. So I don't do it. Um, so anyways, my spinning. This is my latest gorgeousness um, of fiber that I spun up. And I dyed the fiber as well before I spun it. And it's a wonderful blend of um, BFL, Blueface Lyster, 
70% uh, BFL and 30% silk that I picked up at a fiber festival last year. Um, and I, I can't remember the vendor um, that, I, that I bought it from. It's a local, a local um, farm in East Tennessee or this, this region. And it was just, uh, I've spun up several, um, like I, I, divide, I, I bought about, I think 12 ounces and then I split it up into four ounce balls and I've been dyeing them different colors and spinning them. But this is the one that's been my favorite so far. Um, the other ones are packed away in the basement so I won't pull them out right now. Um, but it's like this beautiful mauve color and it's about a worsted weight, a worsted weight. I didn't, I haven't measured it or anything because I think I'm gonna keep it and just knit myself a hat maybe or um, a nice cozy cowl. I don't think I'm gonna sell it. I have a hard time <sighs> selling my hand spun. I'm so nervous about somebody just not appreciating it. And I love my own hand spun so much. And I don't knit with it very often. I really do need to knit with it more often. But I have like my, I have a, a small stash of mill spun yarn. I don't have a lot of yarn. I, it all fits into one sort of large Tupperware container or Rubbermaid bin. Um, I know a lot of knitters have like 10 times as much. I'm not like that. I like to um, keep my stash fresh. When it comes to my hand spun though, I think of it more as curating a collection because so much TLC has gone into it. Um, yeah, just something to show because some of my viewers are spinners and you'll Love a good hand spun. It's so soft. I also learned my lesson on this particular uh, yarn to, to dye the fiber before spinning it. Um, it just takes the dye a little bit better and then you end up with this beautiful variation and variegation um, when you spin it. All right, I'm done for today. Have a good summer. Maybe we'll see you next week. Maybe we won't. It could be another year before I podcast. You just never know with me. Uh, oh, one thing I should mention. Um, I am a yarn dyer as well, Medusa Yarn and Fiber, and I haven't been doing very many shows. I haven't done any shows um, since last fall. Uh, but I will be back on the, I'll be at SAF this year in October. Um, but please hop on over to Medusa Yarn and Fiber because I'm having a huge sale. I've been having a, a sale all spring and I'm just continuing it just to move the merchandise. So it's 25% off all my yarn. Um, and what you see is what you get. Like the yarn that I've photographed is the skein uh, that you will get so you know exactly which, what you're getting. And I have, um, if you spend more than $50, it's free shipping within the continental U.S. If you spend over $100 and you're international, um, it's free shipping. So it's worth checking out uh, if you want to see some of my lovely colors. Medusa Yarn and Fiber. Uh, just medusayarn.com is my website. Have a great day and thanks for tuning in. Hit the subscribe button and the like button. Take care.